you're often called a gospel group, but in reality, you've recorded country music, folk music, blues, rock and roll, funk, disco, and it seems like when you think about gospel music, you're one of the first groups, maybe even the first group, that were able to cross over into those pop charts and still have your church credibility. How did that happen? Mavis, can you lend some light on that? Well, we, we have, um, um, after a while, we, we started asking folk not to categorize us because we, we are singers with a, a positive message. And um, actually, we sang strictly gospel for years, from 1951 <laughs> until, um, I think, 1962. We were in Montgomery, Alabama. We were working there that evening. So Pops called us all to his room and said, I've been hearing this man, Martin Luther King, and uh, I'm going to go to his church, his 11 o'clock service. Would you all like to go? So we said, sure, we'd like to go. We went to Dr. King's church in Montgomery, Alabama on Dexter Avenue. He was very young. His wife was in the choir. They had two children then. And uh, we heard his sermon. He introduced us. Someone told him we were in the audience. And um, on the way out, he stood at the front of the church and shook everyone's hand, leaving the church. Well, we get back to the motel, and Pop said, you all know, I really like this man's message. He said, I think if he can preach it, we can sing it. Mm. So from that, we started to writing. We joined the movement. We traveled and, and did concerts to raise funds for the movement. And we started writing protest songs. We wrote a song called March Up Freedom's Highway which was for the march from Montgomery to Selma. Then we wrote a song called, uh, um, uh, It's a Long Walk to D.C. And that was for the march to Washington, D.C. We wrote, when will we be paid for the work we've done? Why am I treated so bad? And why am I treated so bad turned out to be Dr. King's favorite song. Pops wrote that song from watching the news. Um, the kids were trying to board the bus to integrate the school in Little Rock. They had um, permission from the governor, from the, the mayor, and the president. This particular morning, a policeman, as they tried to board the bus, he put his billy club across the door and stopped them. And Pops was sitting in his recliner. He said, now, why are they doing that to him? Why are they treating him so bad? And that song derived from that. And Dr. King, anytime we would work with him, he, would, he called Pops Stape. He said, Stape, go sing my song tonight, right? Pop said, yeah, doctor, I'm going to sing your song. <laughs> so uh, that's what we, we, we came from. We made a transition from strictly gospel to protest songs. As, as, as time, we always sing some folk songs because all the folk festivals used to call us. You know, we would sing the Dylan songs. And, and um, we thought, you know, as we felt that the, the world was coming together, things were getting better, we made another transition to what we called message songs. And this was reach out, touch a hand, make a friend if you can. I'll take you there. Respect yourself. If you're ready, come go with me. And um, today, you know, we take pride in, in being the pioneers of this uh, contemporary gospel because these songs today are called contemporary gospel. Right. You know, so um, we, we just, uh, you know, we, we were called to folk festivals, we were called to jazz, we won two downbeat jazz awards, and that made me go back and listen to our music. You know? <laughs> I said, now Cannonball Adderley is playing our stuff here. You know? <laughs> so, uh, uh, and it just happened that he recorded Why Am I Treated So Bad? Yeah. And so I listened and I said, well, you know, our, our, our harmonies and the way Pops plays his guitar, he plays a bluesy guitar, Duke Ellington described our music as the staple singers are singing gospel with a bluesy feel, you know. So um, we just, just, just have it all combined in our music, the gospel, the rock and roll.